This is the Tools to Thrive podcast with Evelyn Cook, where we uncover powerful business tools that will help you scale your business so you can retire richer than you ever dreamed possible. Now is your time to thrive. To learn more about how Evelyn Cook can help you scale your business with Tools to Thrive, visit www.cookcpagroup.com. Evelyn Cook of Cook CPA Group, and I'm here with Colin Baker and Matt Meyer of Ringgold Distilling LLC. And today we're just gonna chat about their company, their brand, and their experiences as business owners and the challenges and successes they've had with their business. I know you have some investors that are partners or members of the LLC. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of, what was your discussion process or how did you keep them appraised as you're running into these pitfalls or what was your kind of your process? I mean, we had would, calls yeah. constantly with Weekly them. Weekly meetings during the build out, uh, yeah. phone calls uh, during the meeting or during the, during the build out. And now we're a little bit less as we're now up and running. So we try to do like bi-weekly mm -hmm. um, type, uh, type calls to just- Because your investors have some unique skills, I think kind yes. of accelerate- Oh, they, kind uh, of help insurance kind of mm -hmm. yeah. is something that we- Yeah, the uh, yeah. <laughs> engineering background as well. Yeah, exactly. Like contracts and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we lean on them quite a bit. Um, and that's very fortunate. It's, yeah. It, it, I mean, there, yeah. it's basically multiple consultants that we don't have to pay. Yeah. Correct. I mean, because I wouldn't be able to handle the insurance that we have yeah. if it wasn't for one of the yeah. investors. I, yeah. So that's probably one lesson for other people to know. If you're looking at forming an LLC, make sure you bring in members. I cannot just contribute yeah. capital, but their knowledge and skills. I mean, it's a very active board in essence. Yeah. With their different responsibilities and it's kind of worked well together. It, exactly. Yeah, and to and it's, it's really helped us out tremendously. I mean, because... We're busy enough as it is. Yeah. Um, so having somebody who can take some of that weight off and who's really competent in that mm -hmm. area. Yeah. But yeah. Plus, yeah. they're really invested in yeah. your success as well. Yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 yeah. very much so. Yeah. <laughs> and I think for at least for me, it's some of them have the business experience to read contracts and, and kind mm -hmm. of know where the vulnerabilities might be, know what we need to ask for. Um, and so, you know, a lot of it's just learning by osmosis there to just, you know, take everything in. And so they were kind of, kind of like they're kind of a mentor, yeah. mentor relationship with both of you then too. Oh yeah. 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 So I think a lot of businesses bring in investors and they were not, they're kind of silent. Mm -hmm. But I think the complexity of, and dynamic of launching a distillery, you're going to need more resources yeah. other than just cash. Yeah. Uh, more, more things than we ever thought we yep. needed. It, 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 at the end of the day, this is so much more complex than I ever thought. I thought I was going to open a distillery and be, you know, just making booze and da da da. And then the project just kept getting bigger and bigger, and you well, know. the complexity of just managing everything. It's really impressive what you guys have it's done. It's a when lot. When I first came out here, when you guys first opened, I remember the stills being all nice and shiny. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. They've see, got like, the nice patina. Yeah, now. they're getting that that copper aging to them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Grown or changed. From when you start this, uh, I mean, are you? I'm a lot more realistic. I'm a lot more grounded than I used to be. Uh, you say realistic, like you're, you kind of know more what, what it's going to be what like. What to expect. You're more skeptical when people say things. There, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I don't really take anybody straight at face value because oh, there are a lot sad, though isn't it it, it is sad, it is yeah. sad. but there well, are a lot of, until they've proven themselves yeah, exactly a little bit, then then you can you know you can start to there uh, you yeah. know there are a lot of things in this industry where people are like, oh i want to come and do ten thousand cases or whatever it's no you're not going to do ten thousand cases I, I know you're not going to do ten thousand <laughs> cases um so yeah it's man i feel like i'm a much different person in a positive way i guess Okay, it's good. You you got that self confidence. Yeah. Grown, stretched your your comfort zone. Yeah. Hopefully not any more jaded. <laughs> but who knows? I was already pretty jaded before this, so I'm not sure I'm any more jaded. But yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's taught me. I mean, I had good work ethic before, but my gosh. Um, and and being able to take responsibility when it, it, it comes down to it. I mean. I feel a, a lot of responsibility <laughs> with, with th this, yeah. yes. not only to the investors that have put stuff into this, but the, but the people who have, you know, changed their lives to come here. I mm -hmm. mean, Jeff, our office manager, is the only person who's from Napa. Okay. Everybody else left another opportunity to come here to do this. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so I'm always kind of skeptical of mission statements and their true value. You think it's your relationship you have with those people and kind of what you were 
investing in that allowed them to feel comfortable making that leap of faith? Well, first yeah. of all, we decided, startup. we decided no mission statement, first yeah. of all, because, oh, that's awesome. because of that Boom, same reason. High five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for that reason, like we didn't, it just kind of felt. I had a friend of mine who spent six months working on her mission statement. I'm just like, you need to go call people and get yeah. revenue. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Oh, well, business school told me that. And I'm like, yeah, you need to sell revenue. You need revenue. Yeah, I mean, because I, I came from a very corporate background mm -hmm. well, at one point, and I didn't like it. And I like the fact that we are almost like a, a family here. I mean, yeah. I used to live with a lot of the, the guys that mm -hmm. are... You guys used to have, like, work. weekly dinners? We used to literally live together. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, for two years. Kind of like a distillery boot camp. Yeah, we lived together for two years. And we, so we lived together, we worked together, and we didn't kill each other. Wow. <laughs> Think about that. Um, well, except for that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Back so, in the still yeah, somewhere. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah, so it... Yeah. Um, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, treating your employees well, too. Making sure that they have a reason to stay here. I mean, that's a huge part of it. I mean, so it seems like you're giving your employees a lot of responsibility. Yes. With, I'm sure there's clear oversight and direction, but they have a lot more responsibility yeah. than they might have. And they're all and they, you guys they, are all yeah. relatively young as well. They so. developed a lot, lot, just as much, if not more, probably more of our standard operating procedure than we did. Oh, just, absolutely. Just through, That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So, I, mean, I, yeah. I designed more or less the process flow here and the equipment and everything like that, but they know how to operate it better than I do because they're doing it more often. Yeah. And sure. what's really nice is, I mean, I can go on vacation or something. I don't have can to you take vacations. Uh, I have not, not that time, often. But <laughs> I actually took my first. Yeah, like two years or something. Yeah, it was my first vacation in almost two years recently. Yeah. And I, I, take, I, I've taken I was, two long weekends recently. I had one scheduled for, you know, like April or May and then everything happened. So. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still waiting for an opportunity to. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, being able to go away and not have to worry hmm. about what's happening here. Yeah. That's that's a blessing. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I don't think yeah. a lot of business owners can feel like that. Agreed. Yeah. I think the number one here I hear from a, from business owners is how frustrated they are with their employees. Yeah. Hmm. Like there's often like why do we have this human here or why do we need employees? So it's encouraging to hear that you guys actually value and. Create well, an environment where the employees yeah. are part of a team and see that they're being a yeah. valuable member. And they're all, I mean, integral. I mean, it would be difficult to impossible to replace, I mean, literally any one of them. That's and awesome. like, like I said, we don't have 20, 30, 50 employees or whatever. We have seven. Seven. Seven employees. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of other people that, you know, help us out as well. Yeah. Sure. But having that tight knit of a group. I think makes, and they all have very defined roles and they're all very integral to everything that happens here. And they all have their own responsibilities and, and they, they have a lot of control over how they go about it because they, they perfected the process flow on their own. Oh, that's perfect. Um, or at least mm -hmm. the standard operating procedure on their own. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. So the way you kind of scale the business, you don't necessarily need to hire more people. Not, not for operations yeah. yet. If maybe for the marketing and sales team. Maybe yeah, time, eventually. Maybe. Um, actually, we kind of outsource a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of that's working actually with our relationships with Southern. They yeah. do a lot of that. Um, mm -hmm. And again, that's just going back to what we were talking about with relationships. Because we don't have the budget to kind of do the types of marketing pushes a lot of these brands try to do when they're starting up. Um, you know, we wanted to build it on reputation, build a reputation on making good contract work and stuff. Um, but we, we just needed, yeah, we couldn't go about it in you know, a marketing blitz type way. Yeah. yeah. So I want to thank Colin and Matt for joining us today and learning more about their distillery business and of course. what their yeah, thanks plans for are for me. the future. It was really fun. Thanks for having us on this. Yeah, so it was. We'll do this again and kind of see as we work forward what this looks like six, eight weeks from now. Yeah, yeah thank you. That's, that's great to see. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you both so much again. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.